So Damon here at California Carnivores again, and today we're going to highlight a genus of carnivorous plants that I'm particularly obsessed with. You know, my uh, my obsession tends to rotate within the big obsession. Um, so right now, one of the things I'm crazy about are these Heliamphora, or sun pitchers. Uh, they're a pitcher plant. They're native to the American pitcher plant, Saracenia, and cobra plant, Scarlingtonia, in the family Saraceniaceae. But unlike their American cousins, they're native to South America, um, where they grow on top of these amazing mountains called the Tapuis. They're actually plateaus, so they're flat mountains. And the Tapuis are mostly in Guyana and Venezuela, and there's at least a couple of dozen of them. There's a lot of them. And they're these sheer, uh, sheer cliffed mountains with flat tops. And so on top of there, it's cold. We usually think of tropical places as being really hot places. But up on high in the mountains, in tropical places, they're actually cold. So like Heliumphora, they hate a hot day. The hottest day we'd ever see up there on the Tapuis would probably be like 70 degrees. They like it in the 60s during the day. And then dropping all the way down to the 40s, um, even the high 30s at night. It's also a rain desert up there. And so, you know, we think of deserts as places where um, they don't get very much rain. So a rain desert is kind of a weird idea. But there are certain places on the planet, and the Tapuis are one of them, where they get so much rain that it's hard for plants and animals to live. And those are called rain deserts. So for instance, uh, here in California, we get about four feet of rain in the wintertime. Uh, I used to live in Indonesia on the border in Borneo, and we got uh, about 18 feet of rain per year. But this rain desert on the Tapuis, they get 50 feet to 90 feet of rain. Uh, every single year. That's up to 30 meters for our European friends and everyone else. Uh, anyways, so Heliumphora, they're, they're mostly all native to there. When I was a little boy, there was only four species known because these mountains are so hard to get to. I think only Roraima and maybe um, one of the other ones is actually uh, scalable by foot. But for the most part, you need a helicopter to go up there. And so friends of mine like Shen Li and like uh, Andres Vestuba, um, Lots of people have gone up there and taken helicopter rides to go see these things growing up there. And it's really dangerous. You get dropped off. You can't radio for help. They just come back at some point and get you like four or five days later. But because of them, they've now discovered uh, like 26, maybe 27 taxa of, um, of these uh, Heliumphora. And their Latin name actually references uh, swamp pitchers but uh, it was mistranslated and so they call them sun pitchers because they thought Helia was Helio for sun. But anyway, I digress and I digress. So because they're from a rain desert, they don't have a rain lid like a Saracenia or an American pitcher plant like the ones behind me. Instead, they have a nectar spoon and there's a little bit of nectar up underneath there and this helmet kind of keeps it from being washed away by that copious amount of rain. They also have a different adaptation and that's right in the front about halfway up there's a little slit that lets the water out so it never overflows and washes all the prey out. There's even little interlocking hairs down there across the slit that keep the insects in like a filter. Um, this is a big hybrid. So this is a, a Helium for a Heterodoxa by Miner. It was one of the first hybrids ever made. This is from my personal collection. I've probably had it for like 20 years now without dividing it. And you can see it's probably, I don't know, two and a half feet across or something like that. Hundreds and hundreds of pictures on it. But it's a pretty easy one to grow. And the species are a little bit harder and more, probably a little more interesting. So we're going to go over here to the rest of the collection and check out some other types um, right over here. So there's a bunch here. This one here is Heterodoxa. This is another pretty easy to grow species. Um, most of them grow on top of the tapuis. This one grows on Patari tapui, but then it also grows at the base of the tapuis at low elevations. And so it's not so finicky about its heat. Um, one of the things that we're hoping to do here is to um, hybridize this genus to make it easier for people to grow. It has a reputation for being very finicky and very diff uh, difficult to grow, which honestly it has earned. Most of the species um, are very finicky and they need very set temperatures and they need high humidity and they need that all the time. Um, and they're not very forgiving if they don't get it. But what we hope to do is cross it with plants like Heterodoxa across um, other finicky species to create hybrid vigor and to make plants that are easier to grow so that uh, more people can enjoy this kind of amazing uh, group of plants. Anyways, before we talk about, since I'm talking about hybrids, um, 
we're not very scripted. But here is one of the hybrids that we made here. You have to be careful with Helium 4 too because everything about them is brittle like porcelain. The leaves, the roots, and they don't have very many. One of the things you'll notice right away is what a tiny pot this giant plant is in. And the truth is, if I pulled it out, the roots would just barely be touching the bottom. They don't have very many roots at all. Um, but this is a cross that we did here. I think this is a tequila by Newtens by Ionesi. It's got a tissue culture coat on there, so I'm not 100% sure of it. But already a very beautiful plant and probably just about as easy to grow as the heterodoxa by minor there. One of the other things that's cool about them is they have these um, hairs that are in the throat that help it catch prey, we think, somehow. But you can probably see how they just shine and glisten. They're very, very shiny. Anyways, that's one of our crosses. There's some other ones right here. This is um, Tadeye by Polkella. We're really happy with that cross. That's turned out super beautiful. But yeah, that's one of our missions here is to try and to make these plants easier. Anyways, let's talk about some more species. Um, this is Heliamphora purpuracens, also from Patari Tapui. It grows up there with Saracenioides. It tends to hybridize with that plant a lot. Um, these little guys here are Heliamphora pulchella. It used to be lumped in with minor a long time ago, but now people have really sawed it up as its own species. There's several clones of Pokella here. What else do we got? That's another Heterodoxa. This is Heterodoxa by Ionesi, another old cross. And then if you want to come over here. Let's see. I need a parva out. This is Helium for a parva. It's a very beautiful species. And it's covered in these uh, downy white hairs on the exterior. You can see that new picture coming out. Like, it looks really, really white. And the whole plant is covered in those downy white hairs. It's very closely related to Tadeye and Neblinae and that complex of plants, Ceraceae. Um, there's another parva here. This plant here is Heliumphora Ceraceae. It's very, very rare in cultivation. Um, there's been a few sold from Andreas Westuba, which really have a reputation for being finicky. Um, but what's special about this one, beyond it's just being beautiful, it, uh, it grows up on neblina, only on the very peak. I think it has like a hundred foot range or something like that. It is also very closely related to Neblinae and Tadai, um, but it has no hairs. It's completely glaucous. There's no hairs on the outside or the inside. So for Heliumphora, that's very strange. This is Heliumphora folliculata, a really big clump of it. Um, it doesn't have a nectar spoon. It has this kind of kidney bean shaped mouth. And then it has this weird kind of nectar bean, which I think is even hollow inside, as I recall, and kind of is full of nectar. I don't mean, know if people know exactly what the deal is with that, but that's folliculata. This is Heliumphora exapendiculata. That's a particularly beautiful, beautiful clone. And exapendiculata means uh, it doesn't have an appendage, basically, and so it, it doesn't have a nectar spoon either. It has like a little indent um, where the nectar is. That one I imagine just fills with water. Um, right here is Neblinae from Avispa. I love that plant. It'll get even bigger. It has gold hairs and that just striking red, red stripe down the throat. Who would love that? This is a red clone of Tadeye that we grow. Crossed with lots and lots of things. There's a staghorn fern in the way, but this is Chemantensis here, also Chemantensis there and there. It's another clone of Filiculata. Moving right along. This is a Uncinata giant clone from Andreas Westuba, also super beautiful. I love the um, very, very pointy little nectar spoon. This looks really deadly. And down here we have some more hybrids that we've made. This is another one of the Tadeye by Pokella. I just love this plant. This is one of the best things that we've made here. It just has a wide open mouth and great color. That nectar spoon is just like crazy. Um, I'm really super proud of that one that we made. Uh, I think Axel actually made that cross. And of course, Mike Wilder, he's the one that um, does a lot of tissue culture. And he's really the genius that allows us to get these things to grow so fast. So. We're hybridizing. I think we made that cross like only two or three years ago. So we're growing them very, very fast. Um, here's a really beautiful Heliumphora ionesi. That's a wonderful species. It's named for the guide who helped them discover it, whose name was Jonas. And then they Latinized it all the way to ionesi. 
which I wonder about. You know, I, I'd hate for someone to name something after me and then change it so much that you couldn't even recognize my name anymore. But anyway, it was named for their guide. And there's a really beautiful helium for a minor. Yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much helium for it in a nutshell. Um, we'll have a bunch of hybrids for sale, I think, in about a month or so. And so keep an eye on the web page. If you haven't joined our newsletter, you can join our newsletter. And you'll get a discount code for your first order. And then you'll also get notified when amazing plants like this become available.